Okay. Wow, nice big turnout. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the movie. All right. So I like to make these film talks film talks. So if at any time somebody wants to ask something or chime in with a comment about uh, this movie, as good as it gets, feel free, okay? But I'll just kind of, I guess, get started. Um, I mean, uh, the 1990s, golden age of the rom-com, right? Julia Roberts, Sandra Bullock, Meg Ryan, they were firing on all cylinders, right? And so it's just one hit movie after the other. And then it even, that genre was doing so well in the 90s, I think that's how it managed to attract the attention of some major filmmakers. That's how we got the glory of Nora Ephron in the early 90s. And even some people who tried to play with the genre a little bit and make it a little more serious and talk about more complicated uh, characters and more complicated situations enter one of my favorite filmmakers, even though he hasn't made a lot of movies, uh, Mr. James L. Brooks. Uh, James L. Brooks uh, has not made a lot of movies. He's only made eight films altogether. Um, he's prolific in the medium of television. Uh, and he's not on the level of a Spielberg or a Scorsese, somebody who just turns out movie after movie after movie. Uh, but I put him more in the vein, James L. Brooks, of like a Billy Wilder or uh, a Mike Nichols. Those are guys who also like to take on serious topics and make them funny or funny comments with more complicated characters and more complicated, sometimes serious situations. Uh, he originally got his start in television doing just that, uh, taking on comedy uh, the regular sitcom comedy formula and telling stories about more serious characters in more complicated situations. Things like the Mary Tyler Moore show, Taxi. How do you make a sitcom about New York taxi drivers hating each other and hating life, right? <laughs> James L. Brooks, who could do that better? And of course, uh, The Simpsons, still running and still one of the most successful TV shows of all time, which is probably why he doesn't need to work as much as he does, as, as we would all like him to. Um, but he finally started filmmaking in 1983 for the movie Terms of Endearment. And that movie, uh, not a lot of people had a lot of faith in that adaptation of that novel, a sad story about cancer, but James L. Brooks, this guy from comedy television, loved the story and turned it into, as he quoted, as he is quoted as saying about it, a comedy about cancer. And it worked, and the film uh, actually did so well, he became the only filmmaker to win Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay for his debut movie. So, that's, again, with success like that, right out of the boat in the, in the medium of film, he could probably go home and retire, which is why he hasn't made a whole lot of movies. His other big one of the 80s, uh, Broadcast News, again, a funny movie with complicated people. And then in the 90s, uh, he came across a screenplay which had been floating around since the early 90s uh, called Old Friends by Mark Andrus. Uh, which originally started floating around as early as 1992 about a vile, bigoted New York man who lives next to a gay man and how unlikely they become friends. Uh, he saw potential in this story and rewrote it with Andrus and went around to a bunch of people, a bunch of studios and a bunch of ca potential casting decisions. His original choice uh, for the role of Melvin was Jeffrey Rush, who was fresh off his uh, Oscar win in 1996. Uh, he even flew Jeffrey Rush over here from Australia to audition for the part. Uh, but Jeffrey Rush said, no, I can't see you making a romantic comedy about a bigot, and I don't want to play that bigot. It's, it's just not going to work for me. So Jeffrey Rush declined the part. And so, James L. Brooks went to his old friend from Terms of Endearment, Mr. Jack Nicholson. I, I don't know anybody who doesn't absolutely love Jack Nicholson, and I am one of those people. I do think he's the greatest actor ever and the coolest guy ever, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, Jack Nicholson 
agreed to do the part, but he did share the concern of, I, I don't know how you can make a bigoted jerk into a comedy hero. I just, I don't see that working. Yeah, you've got all in the family, I guess, but I just, I don't know how you can make a bigot into a romantic lead. It, it's, I just, and Jack Nicholson is not one who is afraid to play mean characters by any means, but he didn't know if they could make him into a romantic lead character. But as you see tonight, uh, they succeeded, at least I think so. Uh, for the rest of the casting decisions, Carol the Waitress, uh, the original choice was Holly Hunter. Uh, yes, James L. Brooks had worked with Holly Hunter on Broadcast News, which he had originally written for Deborah Winger, his star from Terms of Endearment. So James L. Brooks likes to stay with the actors that he works with, apparently, which is great. Uh, but Holly Hunter was unavailable. A number of actresses auditioned for the part and were considered for the part. The one who probably came closest was Melanie Griffith, who they wanted and she wanted to do it. Uh, she had to drop out last minute due to pregnancy. So she did not get that part. And so then James L. Brooks started auditioning every woman of 30-ish, 30-something-ish, who could play a New York waitress who could handle a jerk. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, finally, he went with uh, this girl who was a big star on TV, but had only appeared in character parts in movies up to that time, Miss Helen Hunt, who, I mean, was a huge, yes, we met her just a few minutes ago, and she is lovely. Yes, she's lovely. I'm very excited she's here. Uh, which, she was a huge star. The sitcom Mad About You is a great sitcom of the 1990s, and everyone knew who she was, but she hadn't played any leading roles and serious leading roles in serious uh, uh, movies. But she did get the part, and it was never intention for this to be a romantic comedy. It was just a comedy about complicated people. But the chemistry, the unlikely chemistry between Helen Hunt and Jack Nicholson, despite a 24-year difference, uh, was very strong. And at least for me, I think it ultimately works, as you see in the film that we are going to see tonight. And uh, for the part of Simon, the artist, the sensitive artist, a, a number of men were cast, uh, were auditioned. Ultimately, it went to Greg Kinnear, who was also not a huge name at the time. A, he usually played the second male lead in uh, romantic comedies like You've Got Mail, uh, the remake of Sabrina, where he plays the pretty boy who doesn't, isn't just, isn't quite right. Even though he's pretty, he's not quite right for the leading lady. Uh, and he was cast as the uh, gay, sensitive artist who gets attacked in As Good As It Gets, which at the time, in 1997, it was a risk to play, play such a, a, a gay and artistic and sensitive character. And there is some criticism uh, that does go around, uh, at least in the gay community, about the portrayal of Simon. Uh, Greg Kinnear does give him some gay stereotypes. He is an artist, he does have his little dog, he is soft-spoken. So there is some criticism from the gay community. I do not share that criticism personally, but it is out there. And I think it's important to remember this movie is of its time. Um, some of the things that Melvin, uh, the Jack Nicholson character, says are pretty bad. He's, he's kind of a jerk. Uh, but Jack Nicholson makes it being Jack Nicholson makes him ultimately very likable. And something that I believe and something that is a big theme of this movie is the idea of redemption and the idea of understanding what you were not aware of in the beginning. And it is with characters like these and great writing like this screenplay that you can ultimately accept the character of Melvin as a romantic lead and like what happens ultimately in the end with these three characters. Uh, this movie did very, very well. Uh, awards. Uh, best Actor to Jack Nicholson, his third. Best Actress for Miss Helen Hunt. Additional nominations for the screenplay by James L. Brooks. For the original score by John Bailey. And uh, ultimately, Best Picture of the Year. It lost to uh, that movie about a boat. <laughs> yeah. Some, that, that, that boat that sank, I guess? Uh, yes, yeah, some boat that sank, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Titanic. 
Uh, I personally, I, I, I mean, Titanic is a great, it's one of the most popular movies of all time. And very, very loved and technologically very, very impressive. Um, for Best Picture of 1997, I would have either gone with this, As Good As It Gets, or another one of my favorite movies of the 90s, LA Confidential. Yes, yes. But uh, it was an enormous box office success as well. Uh, as Good As It Gets was the third highest grossing movie of 1997, uh, behind the James Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies, and uh, that boat movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the movie, again, is of its time in terms of the characters and in terms of some of the things they say. But I think it holds up pretty good. And who doesn't love a very smart romantic comedy with very smart characters? And who doesn't love love, right? <laughs> uh, that's about as good as it gets for what I have written down. Uh, as I said, I'd like to make these things talks. What are some of your all's questions or comments on James L. Brooks's As Good As It Gets? Yes, sir. I think you're saying that uh, redemption is a big part of this movie. Jack Nicholson was mentally ill. That's true, that's true. He has obsessive compulsive disorder, which yes, is a mental disorder and a clinical condition, that is true. And that is addressed in the movie. Uh, but also uh, some of the mean things that he says, I think I wouldn't accredit to necessarily a mental illness, but you know, <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> what else? Yes? Yeah, I, I commend you on your presentation, but I, I missed your introduction. I, who are you? What? Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jack. I like movies. <laughs> uh, I'm Jack Fields. I work for Warner Brothers, and I write for Turner Classic Movies. <laughs> yes, in fact. Yes, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., Shirley Knight, some great actors in the movie. Another thing, uh, I mean, Dave himself has portrayed the LGBT community as well. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are his friends that are alternate lifestyles, correct? Uh, it's never clearly stated whether uh, Simon and the Cuba Gooding Jr. character are a couple, but they do seem to be very good friends, but it's never directly made yeah, clear. I don't remember uh, seeing them as a couple, but I think no. that they. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What else? <laughs> yes, ma'am. What were James Brooks' other Uh Well, Terms of Endearment, uh, 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 Broadcast News, a movie in 1994 called I'll Do Anything, which to be perfectly honest, I've never seen. Uh, and then uh, just, uh, what was the one in 2010 with Reese Witherspoon? How do you know? How do you know? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And Spanglish. And Spanglish, yes. was his next film after As Good As It Gets. Yes, that's a, another comedy about serious people. What else? Yes, sir. Uh, was there not an uh, actress from El Paso? Uh, I think last name was Ponte Vero. Is that correct? From El Paso. She played the uh, housekeeper, I think. Uh, I don't know if she is from El Paso, but perhaps, uh, is she? Yes, ah, very good. Great to know. Yes, sir. How do you manage to get someone not to come to El Paso? Well, uh, programming a film festival is a complicated process, and booking talent is no other exception. Uh, I, as a film programmer myself, I can tell you, you know, you go to people who know people who know people who know people, and you uh, plug your event and tell them the other people who have come in the past, and always play the nonprofit card. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Wow. Um, did you repeat the question? Uh, how did I get interested in films? Uh, well, um, my grandma uh, loved movies. Her favorite movie was Gone with the Wind. And uh, my grandma, she was the first one I ever saw who not only watched a movie, but she watched the movie over and over and over. 
And she wanted to find out everything she could about that movie. She wanted to find out who those actors were, who wrote it, who directed it. She wanted to find out everything she could about Gone with the Wind. And she liked other people to know that she loved Gone with the Wind and why they should love Gone with the Wind. So I, I, uh, I credit it to my grandmother. Because I have since done that with many a movie. <laughs> Um, well, I do tend to go for the older stuff. I tend to go for the old black and white 30s and 40s stuff, but I love it all. Um, my favorite movie is the 1950s version of A Star is Born with Judy Garland, which we've shown here, which I've discussed here. Um, I love Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. I love, uh, it's not a very commonly known movie, but uh, it's called New York, New York by Martin Scorsese, which is a very uh, weird musical. I call it a film noir musical, and, it, and it's weird, and you would never think that uh, Martin Scorsese would make a musical, but he did, and I absolutely love that movie. I've, I've called it my favorite movie. Those three that I mentioned, I just kind of loop those three around and say they're my favorite movie. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> oh, great movie. What else? Anything about As Good As It Gets, or James L. Brooks, or Jack Nicholson? Yes, sir. Um, I'm not sure like what the reasoning is for it. I was curious if, if you know anything about it. Um, I watched his filmography a while ago, and I noticed around this time is when, like, I guess the production design started getting a little bit more um, theatrical. And I know like maybe one of those reasons he doesn't make movies anymore is like his budgets kept getting larger and larger. So I was curious if you knew about like anything about his like approach to production design in this movie. Uh, yeah, I mean this definitely is a bigger budgeted rom-com, isn't it? It's shot on location in New York. It has big, nice shots of New York City and the characters driving and on trains and traveling and stuff. So it is a big budgeted rom-com, right? It's not a uh, you know uh, four people in a foyer talking kind of rom-com, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, but. I hadn't thought of it that way, but that's interesting. Yeah, I, James L. Brooks' uh, dramatic comedies, I don't think uh, there's much of a market for that stuff nowadays, is there? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if as good as it gets would be able to compete against Barbenheimer. I, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, interesting. That's a great point, great point. Plus, as I said, he's, I think after The Simpsons, he doesn't have to do anything, right? And after winning Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenwriter for your very first movie, I think you can go home and retire on that, right? So he doesn't need to make any more movies, but I sure like them, so I would be open to watching more. Yes, sir? What do you write? Do you like Me? I, I write for the hosts. I write the on-air intros. Oh, I see. Yeah, and I also write for TCM.com. Are you interested in doing screenplays? I've uh, taken screenplay courses myself. I um, I, <laughs> I'm not really good at thinking up my own, I did take a playwriting class and I enjoyed it, but uh, I like hearing other stories more than coming up with my own, personally. I'm, as you can tell, I'm not that great at talking about myself, but. <laughs> anybody, anybody else about it as good as it gets? Yes, sir, in the back. Another, another opportunity to meet Helen Hunt uh, while she's here. She's uh, going to be here for the movie right now, and she is here for Twister tomorrow. Uh, her meet and greet was in the foundation room. That was for uh, community foundation members and also for uh, premium pass holders. Um, but, uh, I mean, she may be open. She may be receptive to that stuff. She was very, very kind We're in, supposed the, in the to be foundation related, room. So I don't know if that matters. What? We're supposed to be related. I'm supposed to be related. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Burdale? Oh. oh, the Burdale, the dog. Uh, well, uh, it's my understanding there, I, that's good, I haven't mentioned the dog, yes. It's my understanding there were five different little dogs that were cast in the part. Um, a little uh, piece of trivia I heard was that uh, Betty White was offered the Shirley Knight role, uh, but declined it because she didn't like the portrayal of how they mistreated the dog, so. <laughs> But yes, it is the dog, the waitress, and the artist who 
make Melvin a little bit better guy, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. For as good as it gets? Uh, no, it was an original screenplay. It was an original screenplay uh, that started all the way back in 1992 by Mark Andrus, who wrote the original draft called Old Friends. And then James L. Brooks got a hold of it and liked it, and the two rewrote it as as good as it gets. Yeah. Yes, sir. Andrus, uh, yes, he's a screenwriter. Uh, his background, uh, he was actually a... Uh, a student for an MBA at Columbia when he wrote this treatment and a few others. I don't have his filmography in front of me, but yes, he has written other stuff. Yes. Yes, sir. Was the mental illness aspect in the original, do you know, or was it added later on? I haven't read the original draft, Old Friends. I, I, if it exists, I, I wouldn't mind reading it. Yeah. Thank you. What else? Yes, sir. Uh, my girlfriend and I watched this today. We want to see another Hell of Hunt movie, so we watched the one with Mel Gibson. Oh, what women want. Yeah. <laughs> that was after this one. Yeah, after this movie came out, uh, Helen Hunt was a movie star, so you know. So she was making movie after movie after movie. Uh, what women want, uh, cast away. You know. Yes, sir. So in terms of her performances, would you rate as good as it gets the sort of highlight of her performances or what one? I would, personally. Yeah. Maybe second and third? Uh, well, uh, it, it is sitcom television, but I think she's brilliant in Mad About You. I think she's very funny and very smart in that movie. Yeah. Or uh, in that show, I should say. Yeah. And do you have a sense of, did she take a step back for a while and is now coming That back? is a question for her, you know? I uh, Yeah, that is a question for her, but um, she... I don't know what is she work, what she is working on at the moment. Uh, I know that she is now a mom, and uh, well, Twister was 1995. Yeah, that was. Oh, is there a sequel coming out? Yes. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Twister two. Interesting. So we have to go to Twister one tomorrow. Yes, sir. Uh, he has not made a movie in some time. His last movie was uh, that James L. Brooks movie from 2010, So, and that small cameo that he did. Uh, it's my understanding, uh, there was some thoughts that he may, uh, he's in 80, he's 86, so um, yeah, I mean, he's an older gentleman, and it's up to him if he wants to still work. Um, yeah, I'd love to ask him, I'd love to meet Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Yes, sir. Did James L. Brooks appear in any movies? As an actor? Yes. Not that I know of. Uh, I think he's voiced some characters on The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't he an author of books? Yes. Didn't he write World War D? Or... Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think he identifies as a writer first, James L. Brooks. Yeah. Max Brooks. Okay. Is that Max Brooks? What word do it was, Mel yeah. it was Mel okay. yeah. <laughs> Shirley Knight, yes, wonderful character actress, Shirley Knight from the uh, 50s and 60s, yeah. What was her kid before death? Oh, um, I, I, I don't have her filmography in front of me, but she was. She was a. Uh, yes, she is. Yes, no, she was a star of of the studio era, for sure. What else? <laughs> if you think of anything else, let me know. Um, otherwise, should we go watch the movie? Yeah. All right, thank you.